Welcome to Central California Surgery's online nutrition webinar for your bariatric surgery. Our dietitians Prudence Tickner and Katie Ott can be reached by email with any questions regarding nutrition or vitamin supplements. You can also give the office a call and request a call back from one of the dietitians if you have any questions as well. All of the information included in this webinar can be found in the Nutrition Guidelines After Surgery book. Please request a hard copy from the office at your next in-office visit or during the pre-op appointment. You can also find a PDF version of the book on our company website. First, we're going to cover some nutrition basics for bariatric eating. This will include a discussion of protein, fat, carbohydrates, and water. You have three main macronutrients in the diet. This includes protein, fat, and carbohydrates. First, let's talk about protein. When you're thinking about eating after surgery, it's important to consider your stomach size. When your stomach is only one to three ounces in size, it's important to take advantage of that space. With the fast weight loss you will experience, many of you will lose a lot of muscle if you don't focus on protein and don't focus on the diet. However, when you combine protein and healthy fats, you can reduce how much muscle is lost. When you lose muscle, you will lose weight at a slower rate. For example, if someone lost a total of 100 pounds and 50 of those pounds are from muscle, that's 500 calories their body is no longer burning, all on its own every day. When this happens, that person will need less calories each day to maintain their weight. This slows down weight loss. The goal of surgery is to increase fat loss and decrease muscle loss. You may also see some people after surgery that have thin hair, loose skin, and look 20 to 30 years older than they actually are. Many believe this is just a side effect of surgery. However, this can be prevented by including protein, healthy fats, and non-starchy carbohydrates in the diet. Protein also helps your body heal and get better after surgery. The Nutrition Guidelines book that you will receive includes all of the information in this seminar. It does have a complete list of protein foods in the back of the book that you can review. Animal-based foods that are high in protein include all seafood, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, regular cheese, and your lean meats like chicken, beef, turkey, and eggs. You also have a variety of plant-based proteins to choose from as well. Plant-based proteins tend to be softer. In the beginning, you might want to look at plant-based proteins as a tender, well-tolerated well -tolerated option, even if you are not vegetarian. Seitan actually has the same amount of protein per serving as meat. It is soft and will take on whatever flavor it is seasoned with. Almond or peanut butter, seeds, and tofu are all great options as well. One question to ask yourself is, am I eating three times a day? After surgery, you have less hunger hormones, so you might not feel very hungry. Normally, if you go on a diet, it is typically recommended to only eat when you feel physical hunger. But after surgery, you will have to set a schedule to remind yourself to eat three small meals each day. Often patients will say that they're only eating one to two meals each day because they aren't hungry. But it's important to begin that habit of eating three meals every day right now. The final question to ask yourself is, am I getting protein at every meal? Depending on your surgery and gender, this will determine how much protein you need every day. For example, women having the Ruin Y gastric bypass or the gastric sleeve need 60 to 80 grams of protein each day. Men need 80 to 100 grams of protein each day. And any person having the loop or standard duodenal switch or distal revision will also need 80 to 100 grams of protein each day. 
Many times patients will refer to salami or bacon as high protein foods. While a lot of these foods have some protein in them, they are considered processed fats. When your stomach is much smaller, either one ounce or three ounces in size, these foods are not your best options for protein. They are not protein and considered processed fats and is wasting that valuable space. Bologna, sausage, bacon, salami, and some high fat milk sources are poor protein sources. However, you can find all beef dogs, turkey sausage, or vegetarian dogs that are much higher in protein compared to hot dogs. Remember, people that have the gastric bypass, duodenal switch, or distal revision are very sensitive to fats, so these foods need to be reduced. When you're looking at food sources and thinking through what is most important, protein is always first. Then you want to make sure you have healthy fats and finally include some healthy carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are found in starches, fruits, vegetables, low fat dairy and processed foods that are high in sugar. It's impossible to remove all carbohydrates from the diet, but with eating after surgery, you will minimize starches and sugars in the beginning. Because your stomach is so small, Things that expand in water like bread, rice, pasta, tortillas, pizza, donuts, and muffins will get stuck very easily. When things get stuck, you will feel intense pressure in the chest. This will make you feel very uncomfortable for five to 10 minutes and may cause you to vomit. Your stomach is like a balloon. It relaxes and stretches over time. So a year down the road, most foods will come back in moderation. However, in the beginning while you're losing weight, those starches that expand will be removed. The one thing that will never come back into the diet is soda or any form of, carbon, of carbonation. Even if it is sugar-free or diet, it doesn't matter. If you're drinking soda or carbonated water right now, you'll want to work towards quitting. We want all patients to quit carbonation two weeks before surgery. Carbonation will cause significant pain as it expands in the stomach. And about 90% of the people that we've seen that regain all of their weight back after surgery have some form of carbonation like sparkling water or soda in the diet. People that are drinking carbonation tend to eat more, which increases your calories and may cause weight gain. If you weren't having weight loss surgery, we would recommend a high fiber diet. Make sure 50% of your plate is from food, fruits and vegetables. While fiber is very healthy for you, it expands. Because your stomach is so small, you can't afford to eat foods that are high in fiber. In the first six months, fiber will be minimized, especially from fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, and seeds. This is why we focus on protein first, then healthy fats, and finally fruits or vegetables. They make up a smaller serving on your plate compared to protein and healthy fats. This is why fiber is minimized in the beginning. With the surgery and weight loss in general, a low sugar diet is important. This will naturally increase your, your, your use of sugar-free substitutes. When looking at sugar-free products, these are the main ones you'll likely see. The blue and pink packets are made of aspartame and saccharin and are 700 times sweeter than regular sugar. Research shows that there are some links to certain types of cancers in animal studies. If something is 700 times sweeter than regular foods, you've trained your taste buds to enjoy foods that are unnaturally sweet. For example, if you're drinking tea and adding equal or sweet and low, you are used to foods that are 700 times sweeter than what foods will naturally give you. So when you have food, you won't feel satisfied. You'll be constantly craving a level of sweetness that natural food will never give you. This is where overeating comes in because you're searching for a level of sweetness that you will never achieve. The yellow packet is 600 times sweeter than regular sugar and is labeled as natural because they take the natural sugar molecule 
and chemically alter this. For some, Splenda will still cause a rise in blood sugars, which may contribute to dumping syndrome with the gastric bypass. We do recommend natural products like stevia and monk fruit. These are two of the most natural sweeteners and are very close to the sweetness of natural sugar. There are many products on the market that are sugar-free, including salad dressings, condiments, and sugar-free drinks. For example, vitamin water zero and by water are sweetened with stevia. Some other options include Crystal Light Pure, which is sweetened with stevia, compared to standard Crystal Light, which is sweetened with aspartame. There's also products like True Lemon and True Lime, which will naturally flavor your water. We went through a time when fat-free foods were really popular. What happened was that when they removed fat, they added more carbohydrates and sugar to the foods that make them taste better. Through research and time, we found that fat-free isn't necessarily the best option, especially with bariatric surgery. This is where you have to let go of that fat-free mentality when it comes to life after surgery. Because your volume is so low, you really do need those healthy fats to increase your calories. Eating an appropriate amount of healthy fat will help maximize fat loss. Healthy fats also help with hair, skin, and nail health. Healthy fats include avocado, nut butters, and cooking with olive oil. When you eat out and get fried foods, these are considered unhealthy fats because they are high in saturated and trans fats. However, when you cook with your vegetables or meats with a tablespoon of olive oil, you have now added a healthy fat to that meal. Nuts and seeds are two other great options along with olives. Chia seeds do expand to nine times their size so you'll, you will want to wait until six months after surgery before adding them back in. Water is so important. One of the number one reasons people are admitted to the hospital after surgery is from dehydration. The minimum goal is 48 to 64 ounces of fluid each day. You can do more than this, However, it's important to take small sips throughout the day. You will feel as though you are drinking fluids all day long, but you do not want to drink too much too fast. It's also important to not drink with your meals. Begin practicing the habit of not drinking for 15 minutes before your meal and wait 30 minutes after your meal is done before beginning to sip on those fluids again. Your fluid intake will be cut down after surgery because your stomach is much smaller and some, some people do experience nausea. However, in time, you will slowly work towards your goal of a minimum of 48 to 64 ounces each day. In summary, you should ask yourself the following questions. One, are you eating three meals each day? Two, Am I eating protein at each meal to reach my protein goals? Remember, women need 60 to 80 grams of protein each day. Men need 80 to 100 grams. And for everyone having the loop or standard duodenal switch or revision also need 80 to 100 grams of protein each day. And finally, am I eating three servings of healthy fats each day? A few examples include having one tablespoon of almond butter in a protein shake or using one tablespoon of olive oil to cook your vegetables. Next, we will focus on how to read food labels. Reading food labels is important for a variety of reasons. First, it helps you stay on track and be mindful of the carbohydrates and sugars in the diet. Second, it helps patients with the gastric bypass avoid high sugar and high carbohydrate foods that will cause dumping syndrome. And finally, it helps the duodenal switch and revision patients reduce the risk for malnutrition. 
When looking at a food label, it's important to always review the total carbohydrates, sugars, and protein. First, make sure the total carbohydrates are 15 grams or less per serving, as well as per meal. Next, the total sugar should be 10 grams or less. And third, the protein grams must always be higher than the sugar grams. This first example shows you where to find these items on the nutrition facts label. You can see here that the total carbohydrate found right in the middle is 15 grams. Just below that, the sugars are 10 grams and the protein grams are higher than the sugar. You will also notice that trans fats are circled as well. This is important to consider for general health. Trans fats are very bad for our hearts and are typically higher in our processed foods. Make sure this is zero or very close to zero. This first example is of YoPlay yogurt. Let's look at the label. When we first look at carbohydrates, it's an automatic no because the total carbohydrates are higher than 15 grams. Next, the sugar is right at the cutoff of 10 grams. Then finally, when we review the protein, the grams of protein are less than the sugar. This is a no product. If you wonder why the nutrition isn't the best, the easiest thing to look at is the ingredients list. You can see that the first five ingredients include milk, cornstarch, sugar, and gelatin. This product is basically cornstarch gelatin thickened milk. Not the best option. Now let's compare this to Greek yogurt. You can see here that the total carbohydrates are much lower than 15 grams, the sugar is much lower than 10 grams, and the protein is higher than the sugar on that label. This item is a yes item. Here's an example of how marketing can be deceiving. When we first look at this, I would initially believe it's a healthy item that would work well with surgery, but it's important to always review the nutrition facts on the back of the label. After looking a bit closer, you can see that the total carbohydrates are much higher than 15 grams. The sugar is higher than 10 and the protein is less than the sugar on the label. This item is a no. Even among a specific brand, some items may be healthier than others. This is why it's always too important to review the labels, even within the same brand. If we compare these two products, bar for bar, you can see that they both have similar amounts of carbohydrates and sugars. However, the orange label has more protein than sugar, while the green label has a lot less protein than the sugar. This would make the Nature Valley Protein Chewy Bar a healthier option that will help you work towards your protein goals. Finally, there are items we naturally assume are healthy options like trail mix, especially the nut and fruit options. However, the dried fruit has a deceptively high amount of sugar. After taking a closer look, you can see that the total carbohydrates are a lot higher than 15 grams. And there's a lot more than 10 grams of sugar present and a lot less protein than sugar. This would not be recommended with surgery. Even with milk and items that you will use to make your protein supplements, it's important to review those labels as well. With milk, we strongly recommend Fairlife milk. Fairlife milk, Fairlife milk has almost double the protein as standards cow's milk and has about half of the sugar and carbohydrates. It's okay for anyone with lactose intolerance as well. The only difference between Fairlife milk and Sunnyside or a standard brand of milk is that it's ultra filtered. This removes more sugar and carbohydrates from the product. 
If you prefer a plant-based alternative like soy, coconut, or almond milk, you have to make sure that it's unsweetened. They are typically very high in sugar if you do not read the label. A sugar alcohol is an item that is added to diet type products that makes them sweet without adding extra grams of sugar on the label. Our body treats them similar to fiber. We recommend limiting them to 15 grams per day as they can cause bloating, gas, and diarrhea in people that are sensitive to them. In summary, make sure that your total carbohydrates are less than 15 grams per product, that your total sugars are 10 grams or less, and that the grams of protein are higher than the grams of sugar on that label. Now we're going to take a look about the, we're gonna talk about the key elements for a successful surgery. Often you will not be feeling physical hunger right after surgery and might even feel nausea. For many reasons, you might not have a desire to eat. Without bariatric surgery, we'd always recommend eating less. However, after surgery, we encourage regular eating to avoid malnutrition, vitamin deficiency, and especially muscle loss. First, Track your food to help make sure you're getting enough fluid, protein, and calories in your diet. One program that is specific for weight loss surgery patients is called Berrytastic. This free cell phone app is a great resource for tracking the diet. Make sure you eat protein first and at every meal. Even with all the education provided before surgery, one of the biggest challenges patients face is getting enough protein in their diet. Ideally, you can use the protein list we provided and the goal is to get at least three ounces or 20 grams of protein per meal. Keeping total sugars under 25 grams per day also helps with fat loss. For those that say they just grabbed a piece of fruit for breakfast as they were running out the door, that one piece of fruit may have had 30 grams or more of sugar. Begin to reduce your fruit serving size in half and pair a protein with it. It's also important to keep your total carbohydrates per meal less than 15 grams. This is why reading food labels is so important. For the first six months, this is a low fiber diet. So total carbohydrates are the focus. After six months, you can use net carbohydrates as a way to add fiber into the diet. How you calculate net carbohydrates is by subtracting the grams of fiber from the grams of total carbohydrates. Make sure you keep net carbs less than 15 grams per meal after six months. Finally, eat three high protein meals each day and have one to two protein shakes each day as your snack. We recommend avoiding snacking on foods during the day. This is not recommended. Because your stomach is so small, it's important that you take very small bites of food. Take a bite the size of a green pea. Next, you want to chew food to applesauce consistency. This will help avoid nausea and help prevent food from getting stuck. Next, stop. Stop eating as soon as you're satisfied. We do provide portion size recommendations at each stage but there's a very fine line between being satisfied and overly full. Eating slowly helps with this. It's also important to listen to your body and stop eating when you feel as though you were satisfied. If you only eat two tablespoons and you begin to feel nauseous before completing the four tablespoon recommendation, you need to stop eating and that's okay. Everyone increases their serving sizes at different speeds. Finally, 
it's very important to not eat and drink at the same time. Make sure that you do not drink for 15 minutes before your meal, have nothing during the 20 minutes while you eat, and wait 30 minutes after your meal is done before drinking again. This is a very hard habit to form, so begin to practice this now. No soda and no carbonation. This is a forever no, because you will experience pain and will begin to eat more food over time, which leads to that weight gain. Also, remember there is no carbonation for two weeks before your surgery. All liquids must be sugar-free or have less than five grams of sugar per serving. Finally, make sure you follow the diet progression to avoid feeling nauseous, throwing up, discomfort, and blockages. Most importantly, eat slowly. Our society now promotes a, like, a fast-paced environment. Be but surgery will force you to slow down. It's important to prioritize mealtime and give yourself plenty of time to eat your meals. Creating optimal fat loss was discussed earlier. However, if you're not eating properly in the way you were taught, you could be losing a lot of muscle. If you experience a lot of muscle loss, you will experience slowed weight loss and will likely not reach your weight goal. In the first six months, when you have little desire to eat, it's important that you prioritize your diet to reduce muscle loss and keep working towards your goal weight. First, make sure protein is greater than sugar. Your total carbohydrates should be less than 15 grams per meal your total sugar should be less than 25 grams each day. And make sure you're eating three servings of healthy fats each day. Start practicing this now. Begin by practicing one thing at a time, but ideally you will want to practice this before surgery. The fifth tip for creating optimal fat loss is to remember to eat enough calories each day. Keep your calories between 800 and 1200 calories every day. You can't force it, but you want to be mindful. You may not feel physical hunger for the first six months or so, so it's easy just not to eat. Sometimes not enough is just as bad as too much. Eating under 800 calories each day will increase the amount of muscle that is lost. For optimal fat loss and reducing that muscle loss, you want to be eating 800 calories or more. This will come as you progress in your diet. We've been talking about the importance of protein throughout this presentation. Not only is your stomach small, but there is inflammation present after your surgery. So you might only be able to eat 20 to 30 grams of protein from food. The other half of your protein will come from your protein shake. You will be doing a minimum of 40 grams of protein each day from a protein supplement. When looking for protein supplements, you'll want to keep a few things in mind when reviewing labels. First, Keep protein between 20 and 40 grams per serving. We have a maximum amount of protein per serving of 40 grams. If you have a supplement that has more than 40 grams of protein, it will likely cause severe constipation for sleeve and gastric bypass patients. Next, make sure the sugar is less than five grams per serving. This is a liquid. Also, in the first six months, you should select low fiber supplements that have less than five grams of fiber per serving. Finally, the total carbohydrates should be less than 15 grams per serving. Whey protein and plant-based protein supplements are best. 
However, we recommend avoiding 100% soy-based protein supplements because it may cause inflammation. Whey-based protein comes from milk. If you have the gastric bypass, you may become lactose intolerant. Since whey comes from milk, you have to make sure it states lactose-free. Otherwise, you might experience irritation, gas, bloating, or diarrhea. Unflavored protein powder is great because you can add it to sauces, coffee, and soups to add more protein. Whey protein isolates have less fillers, so you will get more protein in a smaller scoop. Orgain is a great plant-based protein supplement, but be mindful of fiber content. Plant-based proteins come from pea, rice, hemp, and pumpkin seed protein. Pre-made whey-based protein shakes are helpful right after surgery, but it can take someone two, maybe four hours to drink a protein shake at times, especially if it's on the thicker end. This is why clear liquid protein shakes are recommended at the beginning. We'll review this in a few slides. With the duodenal switch or revision, you'll want to select a protein shake that has closer to that 30 to 40 gram goal of protein. This is mainly because your protein recommendation is so high. Remember, you need 80 to 100 grams of protein each day. Orgain does offer both plant-based and whey-based protein options. Make sure to double check labels if you're looking for plant-based options. Plant-based options may have a little less protein, however, will still likely have at least 20 grams of protein and less than five grams of fiber per serving. Many people don't want the milky taste or prefer fruit flavored drinks. Clear liquid protein supplements would be best. IsoPure and Premier Protein Clear are two great options. There are so many flavors which work great. Now, if you're having trouble drinking your protein shakes, you can select a low volume option. One example is VitaFuel. This little medicine cup contains 16 grams of protein in two ounces. You can order this on Amazon. The orange flavor is delicious. I recommend a clear liquid protein to start. Once you are tolerating your protein shakes, try transitioning to a thicker protein drink of your preference. Here's an example of a protein supplement that doesn't have quite enough protein. This option has 15 grams of protein per serving, which is not high enough in the beginning. Here's another example of a protein supplement that doesn't have quite enough protein. This option only has eight grams of protein per serving, which is not high enough. Now we're going to go over the two week pre-operative diet. This is the diet you follow two weeks before surgery. When you get your surgery date, make sure you mark your calendar. The first purpose of the pre-op diet is to shrink the liver. The smaller the liver, the easier it is to do surgery. Overall, you will be eating two to three small meals each day, along with one to two protein shakes every day. Remember to follow the protein shake recommendations when selecting your protein supplement. When it comes to selecting foods to include in your diet, you have these items for the whole day. You can eat four to six ounces of cooked protein for the whole day. Also, you can have as many fresh or frozen vegetables 
as long as they do not include potatoes, peas, and corn, since these are your starchy carbohydrates. We recommend limiting fresh or frozen fruit to a half of a cup for the whole day. You can also have one Greek yogurt cup and three servings of those healthy fats. Remember to read all of your food labels. When you start the pre-op diet, remember that there is no soda, carbonation, no coffee or caffeine, and no alcohol. All drinks must be sugar-free. You can have other options other than water. However, make sure that the sugar is less than five grams per serving. Herbal tea is naturally caffeine-free as well, which works great during this time. When thinking about what protein options to select, make sure you're avoiding these processed fats. Try to select fresh protein items like eggs, fish, chicken, cottage cheese, and lean ground turkey. Eat your three servings of healthy fats each day. For example, a fourth of an avocado, a fourth a cup of nuts or seeds, and one tablespoon of olive oil are a few examples. The fastest way to shrink the liver is to remove all starches and sugars. Make sure you avoid all bread, rice, tortillas, pastas, beans, potatoes, corn and peas, cereals, and sweets or desserts. Even if the dessert is sugar-free, try to avoid these items. Here's one example of what a day could look like. For breakfast, you could have one Greek yogurt with a half, a half a cup of fruit. Next, you could have a protein shake as a snack. Then for lunch, enjoy a very large salad with many different types of vegetables and a quarter cup of cheese and a boiled egg as your source of protein. Some pumpkin seeds as a healthy fat and a low fat sugar-free salad dressing. You could even use lemon juice or vinegar on the salad. For dinner, you could have four ounces of fish or chicken with a large serving of green beans sauteed in a tablespoon of olive oil. And finally, you could finish your day with a protein shake to complete your day. Since you can have as many vegetables as you would like, there's no reason for you to feel hungry during the pre-op diet. Now we're going to review the stages and the general guidelines for the diet after surgery. The first general guideline is to make sure that you're eating three meals each day, along with one to two protein shakes each day. You do not need to use a straw for the first six weeks. We tend to gulp air which can contribute to gas and bloating. People also tend to drink really fast with a straw, which may make you feel very nauseous or vomit. After this time, use your best judgment. We recommend no gum because you can accidentally swallow it and cause an obstruction or a blockage. And of course, no caffeine two weeks before and for four weeks after your surgery. Once you're able to drink 48 to 64 ounces of fluid each day, you can bring caffeine back into the diet. Remember, all drinks need to be sugar-free or have less than five grams of sugar per serving. Also, since they're removing a large part of your stomach, you will be digesting foods differently. Make sure that you introduce one new food at a time to help you know how your body will feel. We do recommend avoiding distractions at mealtime. Avoid eating while driving, having the TV on while eating, 
and rushing at mealtime. Begin to practice slowing down your lifestyle because you have to focus on chewing your food well and taking small bites. Having a schedule is helpful to remind you to eat. You might not be feeling physical hunger, so you have to have a schedule to help you remember. There are a lot of things to remember also, like taking your vitamins, getting in your protein shake, eating three meals each day, getting your fluids in. So having a schedule will help. Every person will transition a little differently, especially if they're having trouble tolerating these changes. In stage one, the focus is on hydration and rest. Stage two, we transition from clear liquids to thick liquids. We begin to focus on meeting your fluid goals and increasing protein in the diet. Once in the stage three diet, nothing needs to be pureed. Every food must be soft and you can begin to incorporate healthy fats. The stage four diet will be the diet you are on the longest. You remain on the stage four diet until you reach your weight loss goals. This is where you begin to add variety and texture back into the diet. You will still be eliminating starchy foods and high sugar foods during this stage. Finally, the stage five diet. This is the weight maintenance diet. This will begin somewhere between six months to one year. During your follow-up appointments, the nurse practitioner will let you know when you are ready to begin this stage. The only difference is that you will begin adding starches back into your diet in very small amounts. Stage one, this is considered the clear liquid diet. You will be on clear liquids for seven days. The day you have surgery is day zero. So technically the next day begins day one. Think of each stage as a building block. The first two main things to focus on includes rest and hydration. All of your drinks must have no carbonation, no alcohol, and everything must be sugar free. Remember, caffeine is not recommended because it can dehydrate you and upset your stomach. You will not be having caffeine for two weeks before surgery and for one month after surgery. Because your stomach is very small, you will not be able to drink a lot of fluid all at once. So make sure you are sipping slowly and consistently. Warm fluids feel best after surgery. Try having a little warm liquid first thing in the morning to help relax your stomach muscles. Also, room temperature may feel better than ice cold fluids as well. Finally, if you are easily consuming 64 ounces of fluids, you can begin your protein shake as early as day three. Remember, the goal is hydration. I would suggest starting with that water-based protein drink and begin with a quarter or a half of the bottle to avoid overwhelming your stomach. Remember, you haven't really had anything like that yet, so start slow. Like I said before, begin the day with warm fluids to relax the stomach muscles. Ginger naturally helps with nausea and inflammation. This will be helpful after surgery. I would suggest having a little ginger tea in the morning to help with this. If you're feeling really nauseous, sucking on some ice chips or having a sugar-free popsicle can be helpful as well. Even though protein is not a focus during this stage, bone broth actually contains a little bit of protein. You do not have to get the low sodium broths in the beginning. 
This is because we're focusing on hydration and sodium is technically an electrolyte. You can try sugar-free popsicles, decaf or herbal tea, but absolutely no coffee at all. Crystal light zero, by water, vitamin water zero are all great options that have less than five grams of sugar per serving. You can see that the vitamin water zero and red jello have color. However, are still clear liquids. You can still see through them. For example, if you compare milk to jello, milk is cloudy while jello is transparent. In the book, every diet stage has a grocery list. Try to keep it simple and just select items off of that list to avoid accidentally having an item that's not recommended. The bottom line for stage one is to have at least 48 ounces of fluids each day. Make sure you are sipping on your fluids at a very slow, plate, slow pace. For example, have half of an ounce or one tablespoon of fluid every five minutes. Finally, if you're feeling up to it, you can have a protein supplement on day three after your surgery. Stage two. The stage two diet or the puree diet lasts for another one week. This begins on day eight. The consistency changes from clear liquids to thick liquids, the consistency of baby food or that Greek yogurt applesauce texture. You will need a food processor or blender in this stage. The main focus of this stage is protein. So your goal by the end of week two is to have either 60 to 80 grams of protein or 80 to 100 grams of protein each day, depending on what surgery you have or if you're male or female. With the surgery, they are also removing some digestive enzymes and you have less stomach acid, so it's harder to break down food. In the beginning, it's important that you chew your food very well and in this stage, you are relying on a blender to pre-break down that food for you. In your book, you will find a grocery list. It's important to stick to the food on your grocery list for each stage. For beverages, you may continue to have all of the clear liquid items from the stage one diet. You may also begin adding your protein supplements and fair life milk since the focus is protein at this stage. Remember, do not do regular milk because it has 12 grams of sugar. If you want to drink milk, your only option really is fair life milk. It has 13 grams of protein and only six grams of sugar. It's real cow's milk, just ultra filtered. You do have a lot of inflammation at the beginning, so your intake is very small. All foods need to be blended. The foods that do not need to be blended are all liquids, your proteins like yogurt and ricotta cheese, baby food consistency, fruits and vegetables, and applesauce. For, the, for those that cauliflower causes gas, limit this for a few more months. If you do not want to have blend, like blended foods, you can stick to these foods for the week. So your intake might just consist of fair life, fair life milk, protein shakes, Greek yogurt, ricotta cheese, applesauce, or simple baby food items. Outside of these foods, everything else has to be blended, like your eggs, cottage cheese, canned chicken or tuna, and your steamed vegetables. Like I said before, your focus is on protein. You begin the diet on day eight, but you will not be able to physically eat 60 or 80 grams of protein on day eight. Your goal is to slowly work towards your minimum protein goal by the end of stage two diet.
or by day 14. Listen to your body as you move through each stage. Some may need a few extra days in the diet stage before moving on to the next, and that's okay. So if you are not reaching your protein goal by day 14, you need to stay in that diet stage until you reach the goal. You want to start taking your vitamins on day nine. We recommend beginning the vitamins on day nine because the bariatric multivitamin is strong and may make you feel nauseous on an empty stomach. So if you get sick from your vitamins, you will have a negative association with them. So take a day or two to get used to the diet before adding vitamins into the equation. Remember to always take your multivitamin after or during your meal. Because you're now doing blended foods like yogurt, you will begin to practice eating those three meals each day and not drinking when you eat. Practice not drinking anything for 15 minutes before your meal, nothing while you eat, and nothing for 30 minutes after your last bite. In the book, each diet stage has this gray box with the correct portions for each food group. This is really important because I promise you, your eyes will be bigger than your stomach. There is a fine line between being okay and getting sick and it's usually one more bite. Remember, in the stage two diet, the focus is on protein and the consistency is blended thick liquid type foods. You're eating three meals a day and each meal will have two to three tablespoons of a blended protein like Greek yogurt and two tablespoons of a blended fruit or vegetable, plus your one or two protein shakes each day, depending on what type of shake you purchase. Ideally, you are getting a minimum of 40 grams from protein supplements and 20 grams from food for the sleeve and gastric bypass. For the duodenal switch and distal revision, you can increase your protein supplements to help you reach your minimum goal of 80 grams of protein. Make sure you have some measuring spoons and a kitchen scale to help you measure your food items during this stage. I recommend purchasing these items from Smart and Final, the dollar store, or Amazon. You can even purchase these two ounce pre-measured cups. It will make your life a lot easier if everything is measured out. Food tends to make you nauseous at this stage, so I would keep it very simple. This is an example of what a day might look like. I would recommend beginning the day with your protein drink. It might take you a couple of hours to get one protein shake in. This will be the most effective way to meet your protein goal, especially at this stage. Everything is tighter in the morning, so starting with liquid protein is probably the best option. Then, you could have two tablespoons of that Greek yogurt for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because you're only doing two tablespoons of protein per meal. When we're looking at soups, if you're going to have soup, you need to make your own. See here, the chicken and carrot soup. You will need to pull out and blend the protein and vegetables to look like this blended soup shown in the right corner. Because the protein and veggies are mixed together, you could do four tablespoons, which would be two of those pre-measured cups that I showed in the last slide. Do not do store-bought soups. They are filler foods and do not have very much nutrition. Also, there's no creamed soups. Again, very little nutrition and they're high in carbohydrates. You could make a butternut squash soup and add canned chicken and then blend as a way to increase that protein. The three main goals for the stage two diet 
is reaching your minimum protein goal of 60 or 80 grams by day 14. You will start taking your vitamins on day nine or 10 and continue to focus on drinking at least 48 ounces of fluid each day. Remember, there are no starches in the stage two diet and everything is blended. Many people will choose soft foods like oatmeal and mashed potatoes. Even though they're soft solids, they are starchy carbohydrates, which you cannot have until stage five. So these are not to be consumed during the stage two, three, and four diets. The stage three diet or soft solid diet includes foods that you can easily mash with a fork. So you no longer need to blend your foods, which is exciting. Your time frame for this stage has changed though. This stage is two weeks long, so it will last from day 15 to day 30. Soft foods include foods like well-cooked carrots, but you can't mush raw carrots. If you can't mash it, it's a no. When it comes to chicken, a chicken breast is not easily mashed, but canned chicken is. So no chicken breast, but yes to canned chicken, canned tuna, or salmon. You will notice your food choices are increasing with more options. Remember when trying a new food, always just try one new food at a time and only one ounce of that new food at a time. This will help reduce the chances of it not sitting well in your stomach. If a certain food does not sit right or your body is not ready for it yet, your mouth will water or your gut will get agitated. If this happens, wait one to two weeks and try the food again. Each stage, there's a focus and bringing in something new. Stage one is hydration, stage two is protein, and stage three, the focus is now on healthy fats. You're not blending anymore, so you want to make sure you take pinky-sized bites, tiny little nibbles, and you are chewing your food to applesauce consistency before swallowing. Many people get the baby utensils to help them eat, the appropriate amount of food per bite. You also will need to get a food scale to start weighing your food instead of measuring. Make sure you have a food scale at this point. Here's your stage three grocery list. You do have vegetarian protein sources as some options. Vegetarian proteins, if you remember, are usually very soft and very easy to digest. So even if you are not a vegetarian, you may want to incorporate these items to help you get enough protein and add a bit of variety. These are the healthy fat options you can choose from the stage three diet. That includes your oils, like olive oil, um, your peanut oil, vegetable oils, Smooth nut butters and even avocado are all options for soft fats. Here are the serving sizes you will want to follow for stage three. Here are the consistency changes, but the portions for each stage are the same. So you are staying with one to one and a half ounces of protein and one ounce of a fruit or vegetable. The new item in this table is fat. For those with the sleeve and gastric bypass, you can begin with one tablespoon of fat per meal. For the duodenal switch and distal revision surgeries, you can not absorb fat well, so you will not tolerate fats. Remember, too much fat at one time can trigger diarrhea. So you will start with one teaspoon per meal and work your way up to one tablespoon. 
Here's an example of what a day might look like. You are not eating this much food, but these are the types of foods you might have. You might do a scrambled egg with cheese for breakfast, some canned chicken with avocado for lunch, and white fish with well-cooked zucchini for dinner. Let's take a closer look at the white fish with zucchini. This picture of white fish is actually about three servings. You will want to make sure that you use your kitchen scale to measure your portions correctly. This dinner does look delicious, but you will need to shred it up before eating. Also in this picture, the zucchini still has the skin on it. At this stage, you do have to remove the skin on all of your fruits and vegetables. It's a low fiber diet, right? You can also see the three healthy fats included in this day. The avocado, smooth nut butter, and olive oil on your veggies are great options. Plus, you're still having one to two protein supplements each day. Again, the only difference from the stage two diet to the stage three diet is the consistency of the foods and adding healthy fats. Remember, the combination of proteins and healthy fats help to optimize your results. Stage four of the post-op diet begins about one month after surgery or on day 31 you will begin to transition to solid foods. Having a digital food scale is really helpful. Um, you will stay in stage four until you lose about 75% of your excess weight. So you will stay in the stage four diet until someone in our office tells you it's time to move on to the stage five diet. Basically, almost all foods come back in the stage four diet except for starchy carbohydrates and sugars. You will begin to slowly bring in a variety of foods back into your diet. We talked about this before, but your stomach is like a balloon. So it does relax and stretch a bit. This is normal. When you first have surgery, your stomach is somewhere between one to three ounces in size. A year out, it should be able to fit about six ounces of food. Here are the serving sizes for the stage four diet. When you first move on to this stage, you are transitioning from soft solids to solid foods. Your portions will likely stay the same. So you stay at that one, one and a half ounce of protein, those healthy fats, and about one ounce of that vegetable or a fruit at each meal. But slowly over time, you will increase from one ounce of protein to three, from one ounce of a fruit or a vegetable to two, and your one ounce of healthy fat. This equals about six ounces per meal. Remember, three ounces of protein gives you 20 grams of protein. Once you're able to have three ounces of protein at each meal, this is about 60 grams of protein from food for the whole day. For some of you, you may no longer need to do a protein supplement consistently. However, if you are someone who needs at least 80 grams of protein each day, you will likely have three meals a day and always have to have at least one protein supplement per day to get the right amount of protein. Here is your stage four grocery list. Stage four is all about adding more variety to the diet. Remember what we talked about before. When you're trying something new, you always want to have just one ounce at a time and only one new food at a time. This way, if what you're trying for the first time doesn't make you feel well, you're less likely to vomit. If it's not sitting right because you're not ready for that food, you will have a mild reaction, 
like your mouth watering or a little bit of an upset gut. If this happens, try to wait a week or two and then try this new food again. Now, there are quite a few foods that are in the stage four diet, but you have to slowly reintroduce them because they are harder to break down and digest. We already discussed that you want to slowly increase your protein to three ounces each day. There are certain foods that are harder to digest and we want you to wait a period of time before adding them back in. First, beef and steak are harder to digest. So we suggest waiting at least three months before trying them. If you are having the gastric bypass, you may want to wait six months before trying it. Processed fats like bacon, sausage, salami, bologna, pepperoni, and even some hot dogs are considered processed fats. So there's very little protein in these food items. In the beginning, when you're barely eating one egg, you do not want to be eating processed fats. You want to have high quality protein foods. Processed fats can be had closer to six months after surgery when you're easily eating the right amounts of protein. Also, the gastric bypass, loop, and standard duodenal switch and revisions are very sensitive to fats. So remember, these processed fats can trigger diarrhea. Corn, peas, and all types of potatoes like yams and sweet potatoes are all starches. They are not vegetables. Starches are a stage five food item. So these foods should not be included in the diet until you are in stage five, the weight maintenance stage. Lastly, raw celery tends to get stuck in your stomach because it's so stringy. So you'll want to stay away from raw celery. Of course, you want to tolerate cooked vegetables before trying raw vegetables. Raw vegetables are harder to digest. When adding in raw vegetables, listen to your body and do so slowly. Lettuce and salads are harder to digest, especially for gastric bypass patients. So I would encourage you to wait four to six months before trying raw lettuce. With citrus fruits, the skin is hard to digest. Actually, all of the skin on fruits and vegetables need to be removed before having them for the first three to four months. The less fibrous and less gassy vegetables are going to be the easiest to tolerate in the beginning. So begin with vegetables like green beans, carrots, and squash. Just try to remove the skin of the squash before eating and do the same with your fruits. At around three to four months, you can start to try more fibrous vegetables like cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. Also, you no longer have to peel the skin at this time. This is all in your nutrition book. So when you get to the stage four diet, be sure to review this section, just for that friendly reminder. Here's an example of what a day could look like following the stage four diet. The portions shown are similar to what you could expect about six months to one year after surgery. You could have a crustless quiche with spinach and cheese for breakfast, then turkey and cheese roll-ups, no bread, with one ounce of a peach for lunch. This would only be a few slices with the skin removed. Finally, you could then have a turkey burger patty with avocado for your healthy fat. You could also continue to have one to two protein shakes each day depending on your protein intake. You will stay in stage four until you lose 75% of your extra weight 
or until you reach your weight loss goal. Remember, no starches at all. We get, we get questions about skinny popcorn or low carb tortillas, but the bottom line, if it's a starch, it's not recommended until stage five. Your stomach is really small at this time and the starch, even if it's a low carbohydrate, will take up space. If you're eating starches, you will not be getting enough protein and healthy fats in your diet. Remember, that's the main goal. During the first four to eight months, your stomach is very small and your food intake is very small as well. So you will want to choose the highest quality foods. Most starches are processed and although we like them, they add minimal nutritional value. The carbohydrates the body needs at this point are coming from dairy, fruits, and vegetables. Stage five is the maintenance stage. Someone in our office will tell you when you can begin the stage five diet. Remember, this is after you've lost 75% of your extra weight and are ready to maintain your weight. Be sure to wait until someone has told you that you reached your goal and can move on to this diet stage. This is the stage where you begin to bring starches and sugars back into your diet in moderation. You can have one to two ounces of a starch per meal. Ideally, you will limit yourself to three servings of a starchy carbohydrate per day. In your book, you will have a list of options to bring back into the diet. Remember, a lot of starches like bread, rice, and pasta expand and can get stuck if, like still, if it's not chewed really well. So starting off with potatoes like sweet potatoes and yams or white potatoes or beans like edamame and lentils are best. Beans are considered a starch but they also have a little protein as well. Remember, you're still trying to choose foods that have more protein than sugar. So try adding nuts and seeds or even protein powder to your old fashioned oats. That's much better than instant packaged flavored oatmeals. You can also try adding monk fruit, cinnamon, and berries to your old fashioned oats or steel cut oats at this time as well, just to add some extra protein and flavor. When incorporating breads, begin with flatter options like flat out bread or even pita bread. It's a lower carbohydrate option and is higher in fiber and has protein as well. Low-carb tortillas have close to six grams of net carbs. This is much lower than the 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates with regular tortillas. If you're going to do bread, Ezekiel bread is the best option. This bread is made from sprouts. It also has six grams of protein and zero sugar. Because of the protein, and being made from sprouts, it's a denser bread and does not expand as much as other breads. It is easier for you to eat and one of the healthiest, healthiest breads to choose. You can also find Ezekiel bread based English muffins as well. This is what some of your meals might look like in the stage five diet. Remember, you're still following the basic rules we discussed in the beginning. It's important that you still follow those guidelines to keep the weight off. So each, me each meal, you will want to have more protein than sugar. So you don't want to sit down and just eat a bowl of cereal, which, would, which could give you about 25 grams of sugar and maybe eight grams of protein. You are having one to two ounces or servings of carbohydrates per meal and only three servings per day to help you maintain your weight. 
it's important to keep serving size in mind and always have foods high in protein and fats present. For example, if you look at the serving of crackers, it's usually six. So in the picture above, the six triscuits are your one starch and the cottage cheese dip is your protein. You would not want to sit down with a box of triscuits by itself. The top left picture includes one slice of bread, which is one starch serving, along with mozzarella cheese, which is the protein, and the avocado is the healthy fat. They added the balsamic glaze for flavor and variety. The bottom left picture is chicken salad in a pita. Your chicken salad is the protein and fat because of the mayonnaise. Half a pita pocket is considered one serving of a starch. The flatbread pizza was made from the flat out bread shown in the previous slide with chicken on it. The flatbread itself gives nine grams of protein and then your chicken adds additional protein, which makes it a great option. At this stage, it's important to begin with whole food starches like beans, lentils, potatoes, and oats. When doing breads, stick to low carb options. Then down the road, you can even bring in sweets like cookies. Ideally, it's best to still stick to your low sugar sweets, things that have less than five grams of sugar or are sugar-free. Remember, foods like chips, crackers, and popcorn are considered slider foods. You do not want to eat them alone. Always add protein or a fat with them. For example, make a high protein dip or have avocado with your chips. If you do not follow this and you just begin eating foods really high in starch and sugar without the protein and fats, you can stop weight loss and begin to gain weight back. We do have people who gain all their weight back and end up having to have a second or sometimes a third surgery if their insurance allows it. So if you just want one surgery, which would be the ideal goal, be sure to stick to the basic guidelines the majority of the time and keep starches and sugars under three servings for the day. Exercise is so important, but the type of exercise you do when you begin to incorporate them and how much is also very important. In the beginning, when you first have surgery, the main goal is rest, but we also want to move the body to prevent blood clots. In the beginning, you're walking five to 15 minutes this is just enough to get your body moving and get your blood flowing. You are not exercising at this point to burn calories. Remember, you're barely taking in any calories at this time. For the first few months, your goal is just to increase your walking in distance or pace. Remember, you're only taking in maybe 300 to 400 calories. If you're burning more calories exercising than you're eating, you will break down more muscle. Remember, there are certain things you have to do to maximize fat loss and reduce muscle loss. Not over-exercising is one of those things. Remember, muscle burns more calories. So if you want to keep your weight off for a lifetime, you want to keep as much muscle as possible and maximize the fat loss. Wait about six weeks after surgery before beginning a true exercise regimen. At this time, you will want to do some form of resistance training to minimize muscle loss and minimize the saggy skin. 
You can even use your own body weight as resistance. If you're just starting out, you can Google beginner body weight exercise routines. There are beginner videos that are around 15 to 20 minutes long that don't require any equipment. Of course, you can get weights or go to the gym and use the strength machines. You can even purchase resistance bands. Minimize the cardio you do for the first six months to a year and really focus on that resistance training because your calorie intake is so low, you need to build and maintain that muscle. Now, let's talk about some potential nutrition related complications after surgery. Dumping syndrome is specific to gastric bypass patients. This is severe flu-like symptoms like vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, and getting those cold sweats and maybe experiencing some cramping. You can get it from two types of foods. This includes sugars and fats. Some patients get it from just one and others from both. A small amount of who of the people that get gastric bypass will not experience this at all. As long as you follow the guidelines that we discussed in the beginning, you'll do great. Make sure your drinks have less than five grams of sugar. Make sure the grams of protein are higher than the sugar and that the carbohydrates are less than 15 grams. As long as you follow these guidelines, you will not trigger dumping syndrome related to sugars. Nausea and vomiting is something many patients will experience after surgery. Remember, we are removing or putting aside 70% or more of your stomach, so you will be digesting food differently. To help reduce the chance of this happening, take really small bites of food and chew each bite to applesauce consistency and eat very slowly. It's also important to stick to the grocery lists provided for each stage. There are reasons why certain foods are not on the list. Some foods, even healthy foods, can be hard to digest and your body may not be ready for it. So sticking to your list for each stage will also help reduce the risk for nausea and vomiting after surgery. We highly recommend ginger tea, which we talked about before. I would not wait to see if you get nausea, just start having some ginger tea right away after surgery. You are doing clear liquids in the beginning, so I would buy ginger root, peel it and chop it up in small pieces, boil the fresh ginger root and drink it like it's tea. We also recommend taking a high quality probiotic to help prevent nausea. A good probiotic is going to help you have a strong gut. Many of the possible side effects from surgery, like constipation, nausea, diarrhea, decreased absorption of nutrition, can be reduced by having a good probiotic every day. It's not mandatory, but it's highly recommended. If you're able to, begin taking a probiotic about four to six weeks before your surgery. I recommend the brand Garden of Life when choosing a probiotic, it has to be strong enough to have a beneficial effect. We suggest making sure there is at least 1 billion units and 10 strains or more. Many brands fall within these guidelines. Another great sign of a good quality probiotic is when it states live active cultures on the label. And even if it's refrigerated, that's an added bonus. With every strain of bacteria, they are addressing a possible different issue. 
there are certain types of live bacteria that help with constipation, others that help with diarrhea, some help with nausea. So obviously the more strains or the more different types of probiotics present, the better effect it will have. You can take your probiotic right up until the day before surgery and resume taking them on day nine after surgery. That's when you start taking your vitamins. After surgery, we suggest breaking the capsule and adding the contents to your protein shake or yogurt. It's a really easy way to incorporate it without having to take another pill. Dehydration can also be a problem after surgery. Generally, it can be difficult to drink 64 ounces of fluid each day with your small stomach. Your minimum goal is 48 ounces. Remember to take baby sips and start your day with warm fluids to relax the stomach muscles. Think warm or room temperatures at the beginning. Also, until you're drinking 48 to 64 ounces, you should not have any coffee. Coffee is a diuretic and can make you dehydrated. You can have one cup of coffee once you are drinking at least 48 ounces of fluids each day. Lactose intolerance is specific to the gastric bypass. What that means is that you may experience gas, bloating, or diarrhea after having milk or things like ice cream. But many are still able to tolerate Greek yogurt as long as it follows the food label guidelines. Cheeses and cottage cheese are also typically tolerated well. If you drink milk, then the only milk we recommend after surgery is Fairlife milk. If you remember, Fairlife milk has a lot less sugar and it has more protein and the lactose is removed, so it makes it a great option. Excess gas. The digestion of food causes gas, so probiotics are likely to help reduce gas production. The gas can cause a lot of pain after surgery because your stomach is so tiny. Many foods produce a lot of gas. That includes beans and legumes, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. This is why we recommend in the stage four diet to wait to have these vegetables for three months or so after surgery. It's very important to only eat the foods that are recommended at each stage. Sugar alcohols are found in sugar-free candies and foods. Ideally, you want to keep sugar alcohols under 15 grams per day to prevent gas and diarrhea. That um, is maybe caused by having too much of them. Some people are sensitive. Chewing gum and drinking through a straw also contributes to gas production or by gulping too much air. This is why it's recommended to not use a straw or have gum for at least the first six weeks. Things that can help are digestive enzymes to help break down food. And you can also have a chewable gas X strip. These are very helpful in the beginning to reduce gas. Constipation can be a problem after surgery, especially for sleeve or gastric bypass surgeries. This can be caused by several things. First, dehydration can lead to constipation, especially paired with a higher protein diet. So really focusing on getting at least 48 to 64 ounces of liquids each day will help minimize this. We've also observed sleeve and gastric bypass patients consuming too many protein shakes each day. For sleeve and gastric bypass patients, 
try to keep your protein shakes under 40 grams total per day. So for example, some patients will have the premier protein and have two each day. Well, this equals 60 grams of protein from that supplement. This can contribute to severe constipation. So we recommend limiting protein from supplements to 40 grams of protein each day and to get the rest from high protein foods. Focusing on increasing fruits and vegetables when appropriate and increasing healthy fats like avocado can also help. Avocados are a healthy fat and are high in fiber, which helps constipation. Walking and moving your body for five to 15 minutes a few times a day will help as well. Some teas can also provide constipation relief. We highly recommend either Get Regular by Yogi or Smooth Move. Enjoy these teas from the start and have them as a preventative measure to help avoid constipation. And of course, we already discussed probiotics, which is another preventative measure to help reduce the chances of having constipation after surgery. Diarrhea is common for people having the standard DS, loop DS, and distal revisions. This will be triggered by too many fats in the diet, especially from fried greasy foods and processed fats like bacon or sausage, salami and pepperoni. Even creamed soups like a cream of potato or Alfredo sauce are higher in fat and can trigger diarrhea. So if you are not right next to the restroom, you could have an accident. Gastric bypass patients can also have problems with diarrhea. With this surgery, there are several things that trigger dumping syndrome. Some dairy, like milk or ice cream, or having whey-based protein drinks that are not lactose-free may be triggers. So for patients getting the gastric bypass, try to select a protein drink that's lactose-free. Also, eating too many fats or sugars and even sugar-free products high in sugar alcohols can also trigger diarrhea. Now for hair loss. We lose hair every day. So it is something that's normal and does happen to us, but we're also growing it back. This is why we don't really notice hair loss. You cannot necessarily stop hair loss related to surgery but you can minimize it. First, any time you go through a major stressor, hair growth stops. Grow going through surgery has two main stressors. Surgery itself is a stressor, and the drastic change in your diet is also a big stressor to the body. When the body is stressed, it stops doing the things that are not essential for living to preserve energy. Hair growth is not essential. So some of the hair loss is just from the surgery itself. But the other big reason for hair loss is not getting proper nutrition from the diet. This is the piece you can manage. I can't stress enough the importance of eating protein and fats together. Many of you will focus on your protein, but not on your fats. Both are important. If you are not eating your three healthy fats, you will struggle to eat more than 400 calories per day. At this level of calories, you will lose hair. This is why we recommend having a minimum of 60 and 80 grams of protein each day depending on your surgery, and three healthy fats per day. And of course, take your vitamins and supplements as recommended. If you have thin hair, you can take biotin. 
we do recommend 5,000 micrograms per day. You can begin taking biotin at any time, but at least start taking it at the same time you would begin taking your probiotic, which is about six weeks before your surgery. Collagen peptide supplements can be beneficial as well, preferably in powder form. This may help with hair, skin, and nail health. So if you are concerned with hair loss, you want to do the basics. Eat proper proteins, fats, and take your multivitamins and additional supplements like biotin and collagen peptides. Now let's talk about vitamins after surgery. After bariatric surgery, depending on what surgery you're having, these are the requirements. Everyone, regardless of what surgery you're having, needs a very high quality multivitamin. Everyone except for the sleeve needs a multivitamin with iron. When looking at your multivitamin, it needs to have 100% of the RDA or the recommended daily allowance for everything listed. Everyone will need 1000 micrograms of vitamin B12, 3000 international units of vitamin D, and a B50 complex or at least additional thiamine. We recommend getting a bariatric specific multivitamin just because five of the vitamins you need are all in one vitamin if you get that bariatric specific vitamin. So it's just one vitamin compared to four. It's a big difference. Additionally, everyone needs calcium citrate. The recommendation is 12,000 milligrams for the sleeve, or 1,200, I'm sorry, milligrams for the sleeve, 1,500 milligrams for the gastric bypass, and 1,800 to 2,400 milligrams for the loop, standard duodenal switch, or distal revision each day. This is your basic vitamin supplements needed after surgery. In the beginning, we recommend chewables for at least the first three months. If you're having the sleeve, all you need is the ultra solo bariatric advantage. I highly recommend getting the vitamins in our office um, for all surgeries because you will not find bariatric vitamins any cheaper, which is pretty great. So if you're having the sleeve, you would take your one bariatric multivitamin and two to three calcium chews each day. For the gastric bypass, you'll need to take two bariatric multivitamins each day and three calcium each day. And for the loop or standard duodenal switch and distal revision, you're required to take three bariatric multivitamins each day and three to four calcium chews each day. Now for these surgeries, the best vitamin for you is the Advanced Multi-EA. This vitamin was actually made for you for the duodenal switch and the loop. If you get this particular vitamin, you only have to take two per day instead of three because it is specially formulated for higher absorption of nutrients. That's the Advanced Multi-EA. So best practice would be to take the multi-EA. The other option in office for you would be the high ADEK. But if you choose this vitamin, you will need three a day. In addition to this, you will need the three to four calcium citrate each day. I would start with three calcium a day. We are doing your blood work every three months. So if you need additional calcium, we can let you know. You just have to remember with these particular surgeries, they're fat malabsorptive surgeries. So you need higher doses of your fat soluble vitamins. Those are vitamins A, D, E, and K. 
we talked about this before. You're starting your vitamin regimen on day nine or 10. So just remember that we do recommend taking your multivitamin with food. The bariatric multivitamins are really strong and can make some people feel a little nauseous if it's had on an empty stomach. So have some of your protein shake or eat your two to four tablespoons of food just before taking your multivitamin. Your calcium has to be taken at least one to two hours you know, apart from your multivitamin. You can take calcium on an empty stomach, that's fine. The important thing is that you find a routine that works for you to easily remember to take your vitamins every day. Vitamins are critical after surgery and should be taken for the rest of your life. Here are some resources that you can use throughout your journey. Here at Central California Surgery, we offer a Facebook support page that one of our dietitians runs. It is a private group, so you have to ask to join. To find this group, go to your Facebook page, then search for CCBS Patient Support Page and ask to join. It is a private group, so even though you see it on your thread, no one will know you are in the group. It is a great way to connect with other patients in our office, ask other people questions, or you can tag or direct message Prudence Tickner, our, our dietitian who runs the Facebook page. If we offer any online classes, they will be posted on the Facebook page as well. We also have a Pinterest account that you can find it under Central California Bariatric Surgery. This is where you can get food ideas, recipes for each stage of the diet, recommendations for protein supplements, lower sugar alternatives, and exercises. There's a lot of great information and support on the Pinterest page to help you be successful with surgery. We do highly recommend that you track your food. There is an app called Berry-tastic which is made specifically for people with bariatric surgery. What is nice about this app is that it tracks everything that is important for people that have surgery. It tracks your protein, calories, sugars, net carbohydrates and total carbohydrates. So you never have to calculate it yourself. It's very easy to use and will help you stay on track. If you're wanting to watch some video tutorials to help you learn how to use the app, you can actually find this on our company's website. So simply go to centralcaliforniasurgery.com, find the nutrition tab on the main menu, and you will see Berry-tastic as an option on that page. There's a, when you read the description, You'll see a click here area, and that will take you to their blog with all the video tutorials to watch. Finally, there's two wonderful websites that you can use as a resource. Um, there's many out there, but bariatriceating.com and bariatricpal.com were both developed by people that had bariatric surgery. Bariatriceating.com offers a lot of great products, recipes, and support groups. With Bariatric Pal, there are a variety of bariatric supplements for sale, along with high protein food products and a huge support group. The other thing I really like about this page is that it has professionals on this page answering questions. So not only are you getting support from other patients, but you have an entire field of professions to get support from. Here are some emotional eating resources. I always tell patients, surgery is affecting your stomach, not your head. So if you're someone who struggles with emotional eating, many times surgery doesn't help with this in the long run. Maybe temporarily when your stomach is really small, 
and you have no desire to eat at the beginning. But there are a list of what we would call slider foods that you can easily learn you can eat and tolerate. So you definitely want to work through emotional eating before surgery. There are a lot of resources, but the ones that I'm sharing are some favorites. The Emotional Eating First Aid Kit, When Food is Food and Love is Love, and the Weight Loss Surgery Coping Companion are just three books that you can order on Amazon. Mind Overeating is a workbook. This helps you work through the emotional eating and gives you a lot of tools to work through why you are eating and teaches you how to change those unwanted behaviors. You can get this book at lifestyletowellness.com. This particular book was written by our dietitian Prudence Tickner. If she offers any free online emotional eating classes, it's based off this book. I would start with one or two of these books to begin your journey of working through emotional eating. Thank you for listening to this webinar and good luck with surgery.